this is a song we did for Lorraine Coleman, who lives on a sailboat off the coast of Australia and runs her business from there. And Lorraine's a great writer. To give you an idea of what we did with Lorraine's Sedeckan song, it's, we model it after a sort of a, a pink sort of thing. I'll play a little bit and then we'll talk about some indi individual elements. So right off the bat, you know, you don't want to just open up with a guitar riff and bass and drums, so we've got a... Among the things that we have in there is we have a, uh, we have a synth part that's like an evolving synth part with little bells and strings and sounds. We've got a tremolo mandolin. Only place where it's used in the song is in the intro, you know. So, uh, but the whole point is it, it brings everything in, and we get the bass player, but very, very soft. He's giving it the driving, you know, and then and then the whole band kicks in. On into the melody. Now, here's one cool little thing, it's my favorite part of the song actually, is I asked the guitar player to go and do overdubs and everywhere there's a drum fill, he's echoing the drum fill. So ba ba, you know, it's tom toms, but it's just the usual boom boom drum fill, you know, we got the guitar theory on it too, and it just adds an extra little ear candy. And all these things are important to catch the ear of music supervisors or a &R people, because you have to realize, uh, and I've worked a and r before. When you're listening to 50 songs a day, they all sound the same. It's really easy to your, for your mind to wander and for you to go like, oh, what am I do for lunch? Just, you know, like texting, you know, friends go, hey, meet me for lunch, and you, you forget the songs even on. And when something jumps out at you that has some unique elements and some, you know, extra ear candy, those are the things that you listen to. You know? Great vocalist, that's the other thing. Robin spends an amazing amount of time looking for the exact right vocalist. We need somebody who sounded more like Pink, you know? It's so we're going for our, our verse. And then going into the chorus, big chorus. Typically, if you need a really big chorus, you can't just make the guitars louder. So we've even got a complete string arrangement going on in the chorus. Oops, that's the synth part. Right. Just a synth part there, strings, let's see. That's the string patch. Here's an actual violin. Uh, so that can violin or viola. Uh, this is probably viola, yeah, and a cello. So, so you know, it's not just a keyboard playing a string patch, you know. And another synth, to add a little movement. So, and you put them all together, and and of course. You know, guitars, we've got three part vocals, we've got the three part guitars. So, so to make a big chorus, it really does take a lot of the things, a lot of Probably almost 50 tracks on this, and traditionally, 
that kind of music 23 years ago would have been 24 tracks max. But we've got around 50 if you go nine with the drums and and uh, the stereo is sitting at the parts and all the different strings. We conceptualized and uh, her very first song that we did, we got a stunning review from Taxi. Literally, brain, wow. This is long it has it all. Cool, engaging intro, interesting rhythms, earnest, light contemporary vocals, great transitions, catchy melodies, slight edge, but still accessible, universal lyrics, very important. You know, you want to get a TV film, got to be about emotions. Great variations, cool bridge to break things up. I love the quality of the vocals. The drums feel very current and are well balanced. Uh, great play of light and dark, great dynamic change between verse, chorus, etc., etc. And those are all the things that typically you can't do if you're recording four or five songs in one session, you know, with five or six players. So we'll play a little bit of the song now so you can hear the whole song, or at least the first course.